In this video, we'll demonstrate how you can use IBM Systems Director and Active Energy Manager to save energy on IBM servers based on the Power6 platform. If you have a Power6 based server, like this Power550 for example, you can manage it using a piece of software called IBM Systems Director. Director allows you to discover, visualize, and support hardware in your data center, all from a single console. It includes management tools for IBM's entire portfolio of infrastructure hardware, including mainframe, system X, blade center, storage, and power systems products. Director has a plug-in architecture, and one of the plugins available is Active Energy Manager, or AEM. AEM can measure, monitor, and manage the energy-sensitive components of your servers, crack units, and so on. Advanced support is built in for most IBM servers sold today, and more basic levels of support are available for hardware from other manufacturers. Combined with energy scale technology built into every server on the Power6 platform, AEM allows you to monitor and tune both the energy consumption and performance levels of your power-based servers from within the director interface. Two of energy scale's more dramatic features are power saving and power capping, but we'll come back to these. First, let's give you a brief tour of the director and AEM interface. When you log in the director, you're greeted by the welcome screen. This screen is a menu that gives you quick access to the various management functions available in Director. Here, you can see that we have the AEM plugin installed, so to see its interface, we simply select it here. This is the Active Energy Manager main screen. The top section gives you a quick status of your most interesting systems from an energy perspective. Scroll down a bit, and you'll see a list of all of the systems that AEM can talk to. Below that, you'll see the controls for policies such as Power Save and Power Cap, and at the bottom, we have automation controls that can take actions for us based on thresholds we set. Let's go back up to the list of systems and interact with one of our 8-way Power 550s. To bring up its AEM menu, we simply right-click on it and highlight Energy. Let's bring up the trend data that AEM has collected for this system. This is a graph of the system's energy consumption over time. Our system has been sitting idle for the past hour, so output power is showing as pretty constant at just over 800 watts for our 8-core server. If we scroll down a bit, you'll see that we also measure the system's exhaust and ambient temperature over time. The exhaust air, that is to say the hot air being expelled from the system, is holding steady at just under 40 degrees Celsius. The brown line indicates CPU speed. At 100%, the CPUs are operating at full speed. Now, let's start up a workload and see how the trend data changes. Some of the video you'll see during the rest of this demo is accelerated for time. The system has a logical partition running AIX6 and an Oracle 11G database. The database is idle at the moment, but we can exercise it by running a workload simulator called SwingBench, a free download on the web. Here, we're using SwingBench to run an order entry simulation using multiple simultaneous unrelenting users. If we jump back to the trend data, you can see the immediate effect this activity is having on our power consumption. Output power has now gone up to about a kilowatt. Now let's reduce the number of simultaneous users. This will dramatically decrease the work being done by the database. The trend data shows that our power consumption has dropped and now hovers pretty close to our initial idle values. Now that the trend data has shown us how much energy our server consumes, let's explore some of the ways we can reduce it. The energy scale power saving feature has two modes. In static power save, the server reduces the effective CPU speed by a fixed amount. For our 550 server, this amount is 14%. In dynamic power save, the effect is similar. CPU speed is reduced by 14% on our server when the system is idle. However, when a workload starts and utilization goes up, the speed goes up accordingly in order to maintain server performance. The CPU speed continues to vary according to utilization in order to provide an effective middle ground between performance and power savings. To enable the power savings modes, we go back to the AEM main screen and bring up the server's energy menu. From here, we select Manage Power, then Power Savings. From this screen, we can select Static or Dynamic Mode. Let's select Static Mode first and see what happens. You can see that our energy consumption immediately dropped by over 100 watts. If we scroll down to the graph showing CPU speed, you'll notice that the speed has dropped by about 14% as expected. Now, let's go back to the power save screen and select the dynamic mode.
the trend data shows no change. This is because the system is still relatively idle. So under these conditions, the system will behave largely as it does when in the static power save mode. So let's go back to our Oracle workload and turn the heat up a bit. As you can see, the system has immediately increased CPU speed in order to compensate for the increased work. Temperature has gone up a bit as well. Let's now turn the workload down to a more moderate level. CPU speed has dropped again as expected. It appears that the system has no trouble keeping up with the workload with the CPU tuned to its minimum adjustable speed. If we scroll up to see the live power consumption, you can see that the power consumption continues to vary with the workload. However, it's still well below its previous levels. Let's now explore the other major energy scale feature, power capping. A power 550's label rating is 4 kilowatts. This is essentially a combined rating from the two redundant power supplies in this system, each capable of running a fully loaded 550 on its own. Now let's say that your rack has a power budget of 8 kilowatts. If you budget 4 kilowatts to a 550 based on its label rating, you'll only be able to fit two such nodes in your rack. This seems like a waste, especially since the server can never draw more than the effective rating for only one of the two power supplies. If your server, like most servers, isn't filled to capacity with CPUs, memory, and other internal hardware, the maximum power it can draw drops even more. If we discover from our AEM trending graphs that our server can never consume more than 1.5 kilowatts, this means that we have 2.5 kilowatts of unused margin power per server in our rack. The power capping feature lets us reclaim this margin. Through the AEM interface, we can ask the system to guarantee that it will never use more than a set amount of power. If we cap our 550s at 1.5 kilowatts, we'll now be able to add three more servers to our rack. This more than doubles our capacity and significantly conserves space in the data center. We activate this policy by selecting power capping from the Manage Power submenu for the system in AEM. Once we activate power capping, you'll notice that a slider turns on that's currently set to about 1.2 kilowatts. On this particular system, this is the lowest value you can set for a cap that the server will guarantee. You can set the slider lower, but those power levels will only be met on a best effort basis. Let's now jump back to the trend data. The red line appearing on the right at 1200 watts indicates that our power cap is active. This concludes the demonstration. Thanks for your attention.